Happy Independence Day. Uh, so we want to start off this morning with just a few announcements. First of all, I want to thank everybody that uh, helped out at Vacation Bible School. Um, from everyone I've talked to, it was a, a great success. The kids had fun. The adults survived. So that means it was a good week. Um, so thanks for all of your work there. Um, an announcement here about a, a, a grief support group, uh, which is meeting next week out in Worthington and number there to call for more information uh, next week we will uh, we'll get to celebrate uh, two more baptisms Addie and Briar have both expressed the desire to follow Christ in baptism oh come on what your horns are broke let's go yeah. <laughs> so uh, that'll be how we uh, start the service next week um, keep in mind we're going back in on August 1st uh, we'll return indoors on that date. Um, car cruise is coming up August 28th. We've got some time on that before I begin to bore you with details on that. Uh, my phone number is on there. Um, you can call anytime, okay? Call or text anytime. And, uh, uh-oh, did it start? It started. <laughs> well, we had a dead battery over there. Um, Uh, um, friend requests, uh, Ron Shellhammer, um, visited with him this week. He is, uh, better this week than he was last week. Um, they thank you for your prayers and ask you to, uh, continue, uh, praying for them. Um, Josh Gardner, still in the hospital in Pittsburgh. Um, his, his kidneys were, um, affected through this, everything that's going on this week. Um, but there's good hope of recovery there. It's just going to take some time. Um, so uh, please uh, keep him in your prayers. Um, another family um, they called this morning that's dealing with a pretty stressful situation, extremely stressful situation. And so I, I would just ask you to, uh, to remember them in prayer, though, um, you know, I can't tell you who it is, but it doesn't really matter, does it? God knows, and I just ask you to, to hold them up, remember them in prayer as well. Um, I think those are all the prayer requests that have been um, mentioned to me. So let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this, this beautiful day. Thank you for the freedom to, to gather and, and to worship. To praise you. Thank you for the grace for each day. The strength for each day. Thank you for providing for us and caring for us. Thank you for, for carrying us when we need you to carry us. Father, you have, have heard these requests this morning, and, and we ask now that you will just pour your spirit out upon each one of these situations, that you will bring wholeness and health and healing and, and safety. that you will be their strength and their grace. May each of them know your presence this day. We ask the same for us here in this parking lot. May we know your presence. We give you thanks, Father God. We worship you this day. You and you alone are worthy of it. And so now receive the, the praises of your children from grateful hearts. In the name of Christ. Amen.
We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. On a hot July day in 1776, in Philadelphia, the world was changed with this one sentence. These words were not spoken by perfect men. Like us, each of them had their shortcomings and failures. Yet on this day, they spoke a divine truth. All men are created equal. In the years that have passed, this nation has struggled to learn what it means to live up to that ideal. Hundreds of thousands gave their lives to reaffirm this truth and bring an end to the evils of slavery. Yet to this day, we struggle with the concept of equality. There are those who would throw away that which is good in a man because of that which they believe is not. They demand perfection from others, but never ask it of themselves. And those who seek perfection from any other than Christ will always be disappointed. For any government, by, for, and of the people will never be perfect. For it is a reflection of we, the people. And we are not perfect. Yet there are those who would tear down all that has been built because of the flaws of the architects that built it. But we do not build up by destroying. History should not be erased, but rather we should learn from it, the good as well as the bad. There are some who say we need to return to the past, but which part of our past shall we return to? The days of segregation, the days of bigotry, the days of slavery? No. Our call is not to go back, but to go forward. To build upon the foundations of that one great truth. All men are created equal. Let us not seek to prove our holiness by pointing out what we see as the failures of others. But let us proclaim that we are all equal before God, all in need of His grace. Let us dedicate ourselves to make this a more perfect union. Let us in the church lead the way, forgiving as we have been forgiven, loving as we have been loved. Let us here today take up the call that all men are created equal for in that truth his truth marches on
Yeah, if that song doesn't get your blood pumping, you're just you're just not listening. Hey, Alan, this is terribly unprofessional, I know, but could you grab my Mountain Dew out of the fridge in there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Going to read to you um, this morning from uh, John three. We're going to look at the first. Um, we're going to read, believe it or not, seventeen verses. That's why I needed something to drink. There it is. We're saved. Thank you. <clears throat> now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jew Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you're doing if, if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. <laughs> How can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked? Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And you do not understand these things? I, I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know. We testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things. And you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him.
I will hold you when you're breaking Like a father and a friend And I will carry you through darkness Till we see the sun again So rest your head and cry your tears Know that I am with you here Where you can live that way Believe me when I say So the account of Jesus meeting with Nicodemus is an interesting one. Nicodemus was uh, a man of, of great importance. He was a highly respected teacher in Israel. He had great sway with, with the Sanhedrin. And he had he had seen the, the miracles that Christ had performed, and, and he, there was no denying them. He had heard his teaching, and, and, and that had, had given him pause and, and made him think, uh, you know, that there's something to this, this itinerant preacher from Nazareth, but, but he wasn't quite sure what that was. There were some who Jesus called, and they just dropped everything and followed. Nicodemus was not one of those guys. But something that, that Jesus had said, something that he had done, had, had, had stirred the heart of Nicodemus, and, and he had questions. But being the, the leader that he was in, in Israel, being the, the, the important guy that he was in the temple, he, he couldn't be seen as... as as thinking about listening to this guy, he, he, it would have been a, a, a threat to his position. It would have caused great turmoil in the temple. And so he made arrangements to meet with Jesus under the cover of night. And Jesus agreed to meet with him. Can I just tell you that I love that? That, that, that in all of the things that, that are in this story, and, and trust me, we won't cover them all today. We, we could spend weeks on, on those verses. But, but of all of those things in, in, in these verses, one of my favorite things is, is that Jesus agreed to meet with him in the dark. Agreed to meet with him at night, out of sight of everybody else. He didn't chastise him for not believing. He didn't chastise him for not taking a stand. He understood and he was willing to meet him where he was so that they could have this conversation. And too often we in the church, we, we aren't so good at that. The idea of, of Jesus meeting someone like this, this clandestine meeting. Now we, we pull the, the, the scripture out, you know, and hit people over the head with it by, you know, well, if you deny Jesus before men, he'll deny you before the Father. So let's go. Stand up. Speak it up. Let's go. Right here, right now. God's speaking to you today. You better get to the altar. We better do this. We've got to, you know, repeat this prayer after me. Sign this card, whatever. We push, we push, we push. Jesus didn't push him. Jesus said, yeah, you, you've got questions? Come and talk to me. 
And I think sometimes in the church that, that, that we see folks that, that, that come to Christ and then just kind of wander away and, and we don't see them again because we have pushed them before they had their questions answered, before they truly understood who Jesus was. And, and they have accepted a faith that, that wasn't full in its understanding. God is patient. Far more patient than we are. <laughs> no kidding. And he meets him where he was. That also tells me that when I have my doubts, whenever I have my problems, whenever I have my challenges and, 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 and I, I just, I've got to get away from it, that, that I can go and I can meet with Jesus somewhere, just, just him and I, and we can hash this out. And he's all right with that. He's all right with me coming with my questions, coming with my uncertainties, coming with my confusion and my anger. He says, I'll meet with you. What do you want to know? And so Nicodemus comes to him here in, in, in the dark of, of the night and, 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 and meets with him. And he says, you know, look, they're clearly you're from God. I mean, I mean, I, you know, even that's a huge statement. Explain this to me, Rabbi. Which is another compliment this great teacher, calling him teacher. Help me to understand this. Now, you would think, or at least I would think, that you've got this, this great student of Scripture. This guy who, who, who knows the, the Old Testament inside and out. I mean, really, literally. They could take the scrolls. They would be rolled up. You could run a pin through the scrolls and they could tell you what verses it penetrated because they knew where those verses were on that scroll. When they were kids and, and they went into the training for this, they, they would put honey on the scrolls and have them lick it off so that they would learn that the Word of God was sweet. He knew it. He knew every word of it. So you would think then that Jesus would go to the most profound issues of the day and say, let's hash this out, because that's what the Pharisees did. They spent hours arguing over each little point in detail, debating the great theological questions of the day. You would think that Jesus would say, I'm the Messiah. What do you want to know about my ministry? What do you want to know about what all of that means? He doesn't. He says, Nicodemus, you can't see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. Now, Nicodemus thinks he is in the kingdom of God. I mean, I can't see it. I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm a, I'm a representative of the very people of God. I can't see the kingdom of God. What do you mean I can't see the kingdom of God? How's that possible? What's that even mean? And, and, and I think that his response here gives us this that window a little bit into his heart because his response is, is, is sarcastic. Really. I must be born again. Can a man re-enter his mother's womb? Come on, you know, that's not a fair question. We all know that, that, that he's not actually literally asking if that's what Jesus is suggesting. It drips with sarcasm. But the teachers of Israel had a saying in the day that a proselyte, you know, someone who had been a Gentile, 
who had come and into the synagogue and stood in the back and been a God-fearer and had listened to the word and then had finally decided that they wanted to convert to Judaism and they would be baptized into Judaism. And, and, and the, the teachers of Israel had a saying that said that those proselytes are, are like newborn children. When Jesus says to him, you must be born again, he is saying to him, in a way that he will clearly understand if he was being honest. You must be proselytized. You must change what you believe. You must change what you see. You must understand. You, you have spent your life focusing on the law, which is fine, except the law has pointed to me and I am here. You must now look at me, not at the law. You, Nicodemus, who talks about these Gentiles being like newborn children into, into Judaism. No, no, you got it all wrong. You must become like a little child. You must be born again. You must learn what it is you do not know. And boy, we've taken that sentence and we have really run with that one. I mean, I, I, I get it. I, that's fine. I, you know, we put it on billboards. We paint it on rocks. We put it everywhere. You must be born again, which, of course, to the world means even less than, than what it meant to Nicodemus. But Nicodemus, he doesn't want to hear that. He doesn't want to hear that that, 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 you know, I, I, I've come to a conclusion. I, I could be wrong. I know, that wouldn't surprise you. But I, 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 I've, I'm of the opinion that, that most of our lives that we spend as Christians, most of the time what we're, what we're doing is I'm learning what we thought we knew. We come with our preconceived notions, our, 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 our preconceived understandings, our own agendas, all of these things that we think God should be and that God should do. And, and, and God has to break through all of that and say, no, 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 no. You've got to be born again. You've got to be like this little child. You've got to, to learn all over again. And so when the scripture says that Jesus is the perfect representation of the Father, the perfect image of the Father, of course, because they are one, then any understanding we have of who God is that doesn't line up with the life of Christ is wrong. It takes us a long time to unlearn some of those things. Nicodemus doesn't want to even... To, to think about the fact that, that he's got to be that, he, that he's got to be proselytized that he's got to change his beliefs it's, why now what are you talking about no man can do that and so Jesus says to him you must be born of, of, of the, the, the water and the, and the spirit And we've run with that one, too. But you see, Jesus is speaking directly to Nicodemus now in words that surely he would understand. He's, he's speaking to him of what Ezekiel had prophesied years ago. With, uh, I, I think it's in Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27, I think. He says, I will, I will wash you. I will sprinkle water on your heart. I will wash away your sin. I will remove the idols. I will remove the stone and, and give you a heart that is of, after me, that follows me, that will follow the lead. I will place my spirit in you and you will follow me. Ezekiel had said that. And so Jesus says to Nicodemus, you know the words of Ezekiel, Nicodemus. You must be born of water and spirit. You must let me wash you. You must let me fill you with my spirit. You know these words. And 
And then he, he says the, the wind, you know, and he compares the wind and, and throughout Scripture. The wind is used to, to represent the, the Spirit of God. And he says, you see where it goes. You see its effects. I'm telling you now that, that you must not just see the effects. You must come and, 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 and walk with the one who is the wind. Come on, Nicodemus. You know these words. You know these prophecies. You're here with your questions. Here's the truth. I'm laying it right out in front of you. Will you accept it or not? He is, is, is going to the very foundations. You've come with questions, Nicodemus. Here's the answer. Same answer for you and me. We must be born again. We must learn to see things through the eyes of Christ. We must unlearn all of the stuff that we bring with us. We must be like that clean slate and, and let Him teach us and let Him guide us. Let Him wash away our sins. Let Him fill us with His Spirit. Let Him lead us by the breath of God Himself. We must do all of these things, which means what? We must simply let God be God. We must look to Christ in Christ alone. You want to debate the profound things of Scripture, Nicodemus? You've got to first understand this. I've talked to you of earthly things. I've talked to you of, 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 the, of, of birth and, 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 and water and, and wind, and you don't even understand that. If you can't understand this, how can you understand spiritual things? If you can't understand that, then how are you ever going to understand the concept of God coming in human form? How are you ever going to understand the, the redemption that comes with the, through the blood of Christ? How are you ever going to understand forgiveness and grace and mercy? How are you going to understand any of that? If you can't first understand that every man, that every woman, just needs to look at Christ. I fear sometimes that we have so abused that verse that you must be born again that it, it just doesn't have the impact that it should. We swing it like a hammer instead of offering it in love. Here is life. Choose life. Choose life. And Jesus goes on, and I mean, you, you want to talk about, you know, pouring out a lot of truth in, in, in a couple of sentences here. Jesus does a, a really good job. <laughs> uh, you know, there's some pretty famous verses in here, all in, in this brief conversation, you know. Because look, Nicodemus, you've come as this, as this representative of Israel. You want us to, you know, you want the Messiah to come and to pull down Rome and to, to raise up Israel. I have come to save the world. That whosoever will might be saved. Not just who you think should be saved, Nicodemus. I've come to the world. I wonder sometimes if we in the church have truly, truly heard those words. The love of Christ is intended for the world.
you want judgment, Nicodemus. You want me to pull down Rome. I have not come into this world to judge the world. I have come into this world to save it. The message of Christ is free salvation and grace and mercy. Nicodemus, you want a harsh gospel. You want a foot on the back of the neck of those who, who you perceive are my enemies. I offer grace and mercy to them, just like I do to you. We struggle with that. We're good with God saving certain people, but not so sure about those people, and certainly not those people. We would much rather see Him judge them and call down fire from heaven than to offer them the gospel, to offer them grace. It's too much for Nicodemus. He, 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 he doesn't know what to do with that. In time, these words will, will work their way into his spirit, and he will become a follower of Christ. But not at that moment. And look, there are certain truths that we learn from God that just take years for us to learn. It takes time for us to see these things. It takes time to, to unlearn. And that's okay. I hope this doesn't come as a shock to you, but you're not perfect. You're close, Debbie. You're close. We're not perfect. The grace of God is sufficient. Sufficient for the day. Sufficient for all of those things that we struggle with, all of the failures in our lives. You see, what those guys that we talked about at the beginning of the, of the service, those guys in Philadelphia, the founders of this nation, what they stumbled on there, all men are created equal. <laughs> That's the heart of the gospel. Each of us stands before God, equal before Him. Unworthy recipients of His grace and His mercy and His love. And would that we would stop trying to separate ourselves and elevate ourselves and show that we're holier than this bunch or that bunch, whatever. Can we just all bow before the King of the universe and say, you and you alone are worthy. And the rest of us, we just need your grace. And there might be something in your life that you're struggling with but there's stuff in my life that I'm struggling with. The grace of God is sufficient. God has come to save the world. He has prepared a meal for us. He calls us home. says, come on, come on home. Come back to this simple truth. My grace is sufficient. My love is for you. My forgiveness is for you. All of this is for you. I'm not interested in the sinful man in the hands of an angry God. I'm angry, all right. I'm angry with sin. I'm angry with the evil one. But you, you are my child.
he says to Nicodemus, to you, to me today. Come home. Come home.
I'm glad that we have had this opportunity to come home together and to share the meal together. The body and the blood of Christ. This week, when you have your questions, know that he is ready to hear them. He is ready to meet with you. Know that his grace is sufficient for you. And now I bless you in the name of the Most High, the Lord Jesus Christ. Go from this place in the certainty of his great love for you. The honor and glory of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.